Good evening. I'm not going to say that this is um this is part two because um it's not part two. It's actually going to be part one. Sorry, we just and, and I I now know that the uh, sorry wrong camera. We're now on the right camera. Good evening and welcome to Celtic Evening Prayer. Um, actually, we missed everything because the internet crashed about um, 10 minutes ago. Um, just to let you know that in future, we'll do Celtic Evening Prayer on the second and fourth Sundays of the month and Common Worship on the first and third and the Book of Common Prayer on the fifth. We begin by singing a hymn together and uh, the words will appear on the screen and if you want to look them up in a separate hymn book, Songs of Fellowship 352 or Hymns, Old and New 309, or the words we've got there. Lord, enthroned in heavenly splendour. Mm -hmm. Lord, enthroned in heavenly splendour. First begotten from the dead, thou alone, thou strong defender, liftest up thy people's head. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus, true and living bread. Hear our hopeless homage, pray we. Here in loving reverence bow, here for face discernment pray we, lest we fail to know thee now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, thou art here we ask not now. For the glorious form doth fail thee, as of old in Bethlehem, here as they thine angels fail thee, as of old in Bethlehem. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we in worship join with them. Ask all that thine offering finish. Once for the Lord, when thou wast slain, in its fullness undiminished, shall forevermore remain. Hallelujah, hallelujah, cleansing souls from every stain. Life in passing, heavy banner, Stricken rock with streaming side, heaven and earth with loud hosanna, worship thee, the Lamb who died. Hallelujah, hallelujah, risen and ascended, glorified. Um, did that sound particularly horrible? Was it pumping? No, it was okay. I've just changed it. The noise suppression had come back on because everything had crashed. So um, I didn't hear. I didn't hear much background music. Personally, you can hear. I didn't hear much background music. No, no, that's right. The the uh, noise suppression was was off, so uh, um, I've put it. Sorry, the noise suppression had come back on, and I've taken it off. So now it should be back to normal. Sorry about that. Okay, we begin with the blessing of the light, which we shall do before anything else happens. The Lord is my light and my salvation. My God shall make my darkness to be bright. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you all.
Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And we'll sing Light of gladness, Lord of glory. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evil doers. But my eyes are turned to you, Lord God, in you I take refuge, do not leave me defenceless. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. As we draw near to the place of at one moment, let us confess our sins. Give us tears to see the wonder of your presence. Give us tears to see the wasting of your people. Give us tears to see the wounding of your son. Give us tears to see the wounding of your son. We are the race that helped to make the wood on which you were crucified, and still we misuse your creation. We are the race that helped to make the nails that pierced your body. Yet still we use work for gain at others' expense. We are the race that did nothing to stop your betrayers. Yet still we are ruled by comfort or cowardice. And just let's pause for a moment and think about those things that we want to bring before the Lord. Not just the things that we know that we've done wrong, but those things which affect other people and which affect our world.
We have treated the world as if it were ours. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have treated our neighbours with little respect. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have treated our talents with neglect. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Chris, are you going to... Oh no, sorry. Sorry, Chris, I know. You're doing the prayers and... Uh, I'm doing the readings this evening. So, the Old Testament, we conclude the story of Jonah. Um, if you're following it in the Bible, it's on page 897. Um, in the Old Testament, page 897. And it's Jonah, chapter 3, verse 10, which is right at the end of the chapter through to the end of chapter 4. God saw what they did. He saw that they had given up their wicked behaviour so he changed his mind and did not punish them as he said he would. Jonah was very unhappy about this and became angry. So he prayed, Lord, didn't I say before I left home that this is just what you would do? That's why I did my best to run away to Spain. I knew that you are a loving and merciful God, always patient, always kind, and always ready to change your mind and not punish. Now, Lord, let me die. I'm better off dead than alive. The Lord answered, What right have you to be angry? Jonah went out east of the city and sat down. He made a shelter for himself and sat in its shade, waiting to see what would happen to Nineveh. Then the Lord made a plant grow up over Jonah to give him some shade so that he would be more comfortable. Jonah was extremely pleased with the plant. But at dawn the next day, at God's command, a worm attacked the plant and it died. After the sun had risen, God sent a hot east wind and Jonah was about to faint from heat of the sun beating down on his head. So he wished he were dead. I'm better off dead than alive, he said. But God said to him, what right have you to be angry about the plant? Jonah replied, I have every right to be angry, angry enough to die. The Lord said to him, this plant grew up in one night and disappeared the next. You didn't do anything for it and you didn't make it grow, yet you feel sorry for it. How much more then should I have pity on Nineveh, that great city? After all, it has more than 120,000 innocent children in it, as well as many animals. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. More about Jonah in a little while. Right now, we're going to sing again, and we're going to sing. God forgave my sin in Jesus' name. It's Songs of Fellowship 129, or hymns, old and new, 167, or the words are on the screen. And Jonah got angry because God forgave the people because they repented. As God said, what right? Is anyone God? We should bear that in mind that God is a forgiving God and if he wishes to forgive then we should not tell him he's wrong. God forgave my sin in Jesus name I've been born again in Jesus name and in Jesus name I come to you to share his love as he told me to he said Oh, power is given 
in earth and heaven, in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name, I come to you to share his power as he told me to. He said, free. Now, the New Testament reading is from the book of Revelation, chapter 8. It's on page 315 in the back of the Church Bibles, if you want to follow it. Good News Bible Standard Edition, page 315. Revelation, chapter 8, and I'm reading the first five verses. When the Lamb broke open the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Then I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and they were given seven trumpets. Another angel, who had gold incense burner, came and stood at the altar. He was given a lot of incense to add to the prayers of all God's people, and to offer it on the gold altar that stands before the throne. The smoke of the burning incense went up with the prayers of God's people from the hands of the angels standing before God. Then the angel took the incense burner, filled it with fire, from the altar and threw it on the earth. There were rumblings and peals of thunder, flashes of lightning and an earthquake. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now before our prayers, let's say the Magnificat together, which you'll find on the order of service. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Now Chris is going to lead us in our prayers and uh, while she's connecting and getting sorted out just uh, one bit of uh, news to share about uh, technology. Now you know how frustrated I get if the technology goes wrong. Well what was really quite nice uh, yesterday was at the concert um, I was introducing Jeremy to one or two people and when I introduced him to Chris he said, ah yes I've seen you because of the readings and the prayers that you do um, on the uh, live stream services or the recorded services from Pitsy with Nevenden. So one amazing thing about the, uh, uh, the live stream is the fact that we're seen by lots of people in lots of different places. Chris, please um, uh, lead us in our prayers. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give yeah. us today our daily bread, 
and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Collect for this week. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And the evening collect. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear Lord and Father, who knows each of us by name, thank you that you promised us that where two or three were gathered, you are there in the midst to hear our prayer. Tonight, let us be very mindful of those thousands of people who have died in the Morocco earthquake, those that are suffering and missing. Heavenly Father, the beautiful world you created is broken. We pray for all those in your world affected by climate change, wildfires, cyclones, flooding. Keep everyone safe. Open the hearts of all people, including us, to save our planet for humans and animals. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Our prayers for the church in the world this week focus on King Charles III, defender of the faith, the church in Ireland, in Aberdeen and Orkney, Zululand, Southern Africa and Nigeria, and in the deanery of Thorock. The Venerable Adam Atkinson, Bishop of Bradwell elect, and the Right Reverend Gulli Francis de Harney, our Bishop of Chelmsford, and for all in the parish of Pitsy with Nevenden and our associated causes. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the ministry of Reverend Simon in our churches, care homes and schools, who encourages all those with his care and understanding. Bless us as we start our celebrations for St. Gabriel's Diamond Anniversary and acknowledge our patronal festival of St. Margaret. We give thanks to all those who came to the evening yesterday. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all in our own communities and throughout the world where war destroys lives. We pray that your spirit of peace will protect the vulnerable, restrain the angry, and bring comfort to the lives of those who are feel trapped and alone. We pray for all those who are suffering in their lives through illness in body and in mind. Bring them hope of an ending to their sufferings and a resolution to their difficulties. Show us the best way to help those who suffer. Lord, come breathe on these people with your Holy Spirit and bring great loving and healing, hope and joy. We think of all those on our parish prayer list and also those known only to us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And for the bereaved, 
We join with many throughout the world and especially the royal family as we have just seen the first anniversary of the passing of our dear Queen Elizabeth. Lord, we know that you are the God who can comfort us in her darkest grief. We pray that you provide a time of comfort and rest for those whose hearts are hurting right now. Wrap them in your love and remind them that though they may have lost someone dear, they are not alone, for you are with them. May all those we have lost and loved rest in the perfect peace only found in you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us in a moment of silence bring our own petitions to our Lord. And for this evening, Lord, we thank you for walking with us throughout another day and all the blessings you have given us. Bring peace and comfort to our hearts. Comfort and guide us as we sleep and protect us and those we love from all evil. Merciful Father, accept the prayers for our Saviour Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you, Chris, for leading us in our prayers. And uh, we shall sing before words of wisdom, or hopefully words of wisdom, and, uh, oh, no, we won't. We will in a minute. Just need to get onto page two. Longing for light, we wait in darkness.
May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Silence in heaven? Wow! I remember when I first read that, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. How can there be silence in heaven? Heaven, and certainly for half an hour, heaven is eternal. Heaven is always there. Heaven is where God is. Heaven is not bounded by time. Heaven isn't, oh, let's be quiet for half an hour. Wow, this is something incredibly special. Now, what's going on at this point is there are seven seals which only Jesus is worthy to open. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain for us. Only Jesus is worthy to break open the seals and as each one of the seven seals is broken open in the book of Revelation we see to quote the very first chapter the things that are now and the things that will happen afterwards I think we have to really bear that in mind with prophecy all the time Old Testament New Testament whatever it's the things that are now and the things that will happen afterwards. So this little view into the book of Revelation is not just about what's going to happen in the distant future, it's what's happening now for John and for the apostles and for the church and what's going to happen. And with all of God's prophecies to us, it's all about what's happening to us now as well as what may happen afterwards. So. If heaven stops for half an hour, this must be incredibly special. This must be momentous. This must be amazing. There's two sorts of time in the New Testament. There are two words for time. The first one is chronos, from which we get words like chronological and chronometer and so on. And chronos simply means the passage of time days, hours, minutes, um, normal time. But there's another time in the Bible, and that's Kairos time. And Kairos time is the moment, the event, the special moment that Jesus, God, is going to do something, is going to happen. And I think with the whole of Revelation, we're talking about Kairos time. We're not talking about um, time that's just days and hours and minutes we're talking about special moments in God's time and in this particular bit the seventh seal is opened and suddenly all the prayers of God's people are being received now again this is not just in a moment in the year 69 AD or whenever it was written all the prayers of God's people the prayers of God's people from the dim distant past the prayers of God's people that in our time haven't happened yet 
They're all there. God has them all with him. And the angel mixes incense from heaven with the prayers of all God's people and he throws it on the earth and great power is unleashed. The power of prayer is unleashed on the world. So the question, does prayer change God's mind? Well, I have to say, and I will justify this statement, of course not. Our prayers doesn't change God, but our prayers change us. Because the idea is of us praying, that we pray and we pray and we pray. And that prayer changes us because we learn to pray in accordance with God's will. Do you remember this morning, we looked at those verses which we looked at in family service a few weeks ago. Whatever you prohibit on earth, shall be prohibited in heaven and whatever you permit on earth and do you remember I told you about that very funny English tense that we don't use anymore the future perfect whatever you permit on earth shall have been permitted in heaven in other words we're not allowing things we're just praying consistently with God to allow things that have already been decreed God knows what he's going to do there is no plan B. God doesn't cause shadows by changing and shifting. God is God. And he doesn't change at all. We change. Look at Jonah. Great example of this idea of prayer. God wanted him to preach in Nineveh. I believe that God already knew that the people of Nineveh would repent and if you work backwards, God knew that because God knew that eventually Jonah would go and preach to them and because of Jonah's preaching they would repent of their evil ways. And because Jonah ran away in the first place, God knew that eventually he would bring Jonah back so that Jonah would go and preach, so that Jonah would preach and the people would repent and then the people would be saved rather than punished. Of course God knew that. Of course God knew what he was going to do but he needed to make Jonah aware of it. He needed to make Jonah do what God wants him to do so that it would fit in with his plan. So Jonah was changed to do what God wants. Well, we think he is. It was all left a bit hanging in the air at the end when God's shouting at Jonah and saying, look, you, I, I gave you this plant and it gave you some shade and when it died you started shouting at it and shouting at me. You felt sorry for the plant that died. How sorry do you think we should feel for the people of Nineveh? We don't want them to be destroyed. We wanted them to repent. And that's how God works. So with all these things in Revelation, the things that are now and the things that will come afterwards, God knows what's going to happen. God knows when the end's going to come. God knows when he's going to blow the trumpet and finish things off. God knows who's going to be saved and who isn't. God knows what we're going to do tomorrow. What we do is no, makes no difference. Now, um, I could pray that Manchester City win their next game of football. Please, Lord, help Manchester City to win their next game of football. But that's an irrelevant prayer. Because God already knows what the result is going to be on Saturday week or whenever it is. God already knows. What he wants me to do is to pray in accordance with his will. And not waste my time praying about trivial things that actually in the greater scheme of things don't matter. But he wants me to pray about people. To pray for their well-being. To pray for their souls. To pray that they will know that God is beside them. Because I believe that's what God's will is for these people to be made whole and to be with him. Now that wholeness may not occur until we're with the Lord, but that doesn't matter. Our job is to pray for about the things that are now and the things that will be in accordance with the will of God. And we must pray that people will recognise that Jesus has died for them and risen from the dead to give them life. That's the prayer we need to offer that people will hear and understand because we want them to be with us in understanding God's will. 
And a uh, final comment. Um, I think I told you last week that I'd got so incensed by this survey of clergy in the, in the Times that I wrote to the Times and they eventually published my letter. And I quoted from uh, Romans chapter 12. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by a complete renewal of your mind. Then you will know the will of God. And I think that sums it up. If we don't go along with the world, but we do what God wants, then as we pray and as we dedicate our lives to him, we will know what the will of God is, and we will pray in accordance with his will. So, final hymn, and we've still got internet and <laughs> we've still got ourselves together, which is quite amazing. Right, let's um, share the screen for the last one. Ye holy angels bright, who wait at God's right hand, uh, Songs of Fellowship 619 or Hymns Old and New 564. up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall gently upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.